Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ivy and the CIA. I have with me Lisi, who is a really dear friend of mine, and we used to work together. Welcome, Lisi, to the podcast. My name is Lisi Wang. I am currently a design director at Sketchers USA. I'm also an artist. As my side hustle, I have my own Etsy shop, which I just launched, and learning and perfecting my crafts every day and try to be better. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to ask you a series of questions to get to know you better because the audience is getting to know you the first time, but also it's that you can share your anything that you want to share, your best advice about living your best life, your best advice about pursuing your dreams, because... The reason why I brought you out is to share your story because you are one of the few people, there are many, but I'm saying personally in my life that have not taken the what people would expect you and I to do in our careers to go and pursue our dreams. And I really admire that about you. So if I were a genie and I was to grant you one wish and you can't wish for more wishes, what would you wish and why? I would probably wish for um, maybe giving more eight extra hours in a day every day for the rest of my life because everything I want to accomplish now requires more time and as we all know times are limited I have a full-time job I have a child and there's you know family things that I want to do and then there's also you know, I want to learn and continue to get better with my art. And all that takes time. So if you can give me more time in a day, I don't need to live longer. I don't need to, you know, age slower. If you just give me eight more hours in a day, I think I'll be very happy. Wow, that's interesting. So unlimited time is very important to you. And so of the time that you have during the day to focus on your art and your creativity, how much time is that? Could you say? Uh, I mean, my my full time job is pretty creative, so I get to pretty much do that, you know, at least eight nine hours a day. But then I'm also trying to be artist on the side, so that's you know, I take an hour in the morning. I wake up at six a.m. That's an hour in the morning, and then sometimes I force myself to do more art after my child goes to sleep, which is around eight o'clock. So maybe I get you know eight to nine or eight to ten another couple hours in. But then I'm exhausted. And in the, on the weekend, how a child, you know, I have kids that they need activities and whatnot. So I would say I'm trying to be creative if I can have it every single day, 12 hours a day, if I can. <laughs> wow. And that, it just amazes me because to be creative requires you to think and apply your imagination, your creativity, tapping into that. Most people don't even know, A, how to really learn and apply, like use their mind to think creatively and solve problems. Yeah. So that's awesome that you have have the discipline to want to do this after everything's said and done, like all your responsibilities and you're like, okay, this is me time. Yeah. I mean, this, I think, you know, people think creative, being creative is so glamorous. Being a designer and artist is so glamorous. It's like like a dream for people right but once you get into it you know it's, it's a lifestyle it's not just something you do from you know like nine to ten or ten to whatever it's a lifestyle you're in it a hundred percent of the time you I cannot turn my brain off either I'm thinking about shoes or I'm thinking about art it doesn't go off and sometimes it's a very it's a torture existence because like it and if you ask every creative person, they will tell you the same thing. It's a torture existence because you're constantly thinking about how to make yourself better and do better, be better. But the flip side of that is you're constantly beating yourself up because what you're doing now is not good enough because you want to get to the, the higher level, higher echelon of achievement or you know creativity and that next new create design or that next new amazing concept so it's a torture existence <laughs> as a creative person i can see that i have a couple of friends that are musicians and they they create their own music and write their own music it's a similar mindset and however they what do you think helps you to be successful at what you do because of this tortured existence that you described? 
it's um, because I know any other way of existence would not make me happy. If I'm not tortured, then I'm bored. You know, <laughs> and between being tortured and achieve something great and constantly perfecting myself when growth happens, I'd rather be that than being bored and just go through life hitting all the checklists. Like I did this, I did that. That's great. I'm happy. That's the yeah. only way I keep going because um, it's not really a getting to a certain destination. Like, okay, I, you know, when I was with you at the law, I want to be a shoe designer. You know, now I am a shoe designer. Now what? I want to be a better shoe designer. I want to become um, more innovative, whatever it may be. It's never about the destination. It's about the journey. And therefore, you have to be okay with whatever the journey um comes with you know and tor being tortured is part of it so you just you just make peace with it and know that that's part of life and that it's a lifestyle so i always tell people who wants to get into the creative field like ask yourself do you have that because you i hate to tell especially young kids this but creativity is cheap talent is cheap there's there's so many people out there with talent with kid creativity like if the, in the world, especially now we're in the globalized economy. If it's not in my local area, if it's not in the United States, I can go to another country, find somebody cheaper or more talented. No problem. So creativity and talent is cheap, but how do you get to the point where you make money or you're valued? You know, it's um, hard work and being persistent and have that tenacity to keep going. And that's the only way you're going to be, you know, successful in getting anywhere in the creative field. Yeah, it's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in anything you do in life. Having consistent self-discipline, demanding more of yourself, working harder on yourself than you do on your job. And I just, I love that you do it in, a, in an area that you find fulfilling and you're willing to accept that this is what it takes, accept ownership of what it's going to take to be successful, what it's going to take to pursue and realize your dreams. It is very, very bold and courageous that you do this. I love it. So if you could tell your younger self some advice, what would you tell your younger self? What you know today? Uh, I, t I would definitely tell my younger self to start making art earlier, start, start practicing earlier. Because it's, it's funny thing with, with being a creative person, like, I, you know, I always knew I was creative and I studied art in college. I always felt like, oh, that's something I'll go back to, something I'll always have if I just go back to it, like, it'll be there again, which is not the case. Um, creativity is a practiced skill. You, you know, some talent, some innate advantage is good but it all comes down to practice and putting a time in it so i wish that i spend more time practicing earlier then i sometimes i think of how far along i will be now you know yeah that's Maybe. what i would tell my younger self for sure <laughs> wow but are you uh, you're doing a little bit of teaching right they have asked you invited you to teach what are they asking you to share about um mostly my practical experience in real life in the real industry how you know what I learned in school works you know I learned so I went back to school for forward design right so I I still go back to those classes all the time tell them I pretty much know what I'm telling you now like there's certain things that you need to do you need to keep on doing and then certain things that you think it's this way but it's not like that at all when you actually start doing it um, I think a lot of, and I think that's probably the same with a lot of industries, like what you learn and what we know in school is not the case in, in reality. And I wish when I was in college, I had more of these professionals coming talk to us, not just professors and, you know, books and going to um, lectures. If I had actual, you know, artists or designers coming talk to me when I was in school, tell me all these things, then I feel like maybe my perception of the whole thing would be different. I'll start working harder earlier. Who knows? <laughs> That's actually very good advice because they, they, they live in this dream that, oh, I'm going to be this, you know, that term starving artist. They really believe that stuff. But because they believe that mindset, that struggle is real. 
it's actually trying to realize that, hey, you can be an artist and act, you can actually be very successful. It's knowing how to marry the two together and know that to serve people and to give people a lot of joy because they wear your designs. And to know that because they can, they can buy this, they can also, they, everyone wins. Yeah. You win, they win, you know what I mean? Yeah. What else would you tell them besides what you just said? Any other advice? Uh, to the students or just anybody? <laughs> uh, uh, to the students, I mean, we'll just use their, that audience as an example. Sure, um, advice now. Um, because I'm in the show industry, it's a small world. Um, I will probably tell them, um, you might need to edit this part out, but, <laughs> but I will tell the party, tell them that, um, you know, the creativity and the technical part of things is very important, but also the people you work with and how you are with your team and with your environment is almost as important as your talent. Because being talent is just 20 part of 20 percent part of your job, but working with other people and have to constantly revise and go back to things that you thought was awesome, but somebody else didn't think so. It, you know, like all that, you have to be flex, flexible and be oh, be good with working with people, not just okay, but excel at it. This is how you will set yourself apart from just another talented designer or artist. Bingo. Actually, that's part of being a good leader too, is knowing how to collaborate and work with other people and being open to feedback, but yet being able to tell them the hard stuff, tell them things that you know can help them be more successful. And not everyone's <laughs> open to that kind of feedback because it's hard to, you know, when your pride is there and you're like, oh, that hurt. But it's like, not to take it personally, because yes. it's just business. Yeah. So that mindset that we learned at Deloitte, you know, because everything is a team environment and our clients are fun and interesting. We yeah. learned a lot about how to work as a team and work to win, yeah. right? And that's still very true in any industry, even in design, something that you think is so individualistic. It's all about the person that's creating the, whatever it is, the creative content, but that's still not true. You're still working with a team and how you are with the team is still very, very critical. So I'm, I'm a man, so I'm a director now, so I have a team of designers that I work with. So I've been on both sides of it now, and I can tell you it's seeing it from both sides of the, you know, the coin, the, the issue, it's pretty enlightening because I've been on the other side when people tell me like, you need to change this, change that. I'm like, why? Like, I like it the way it is. If I'm the designer, like, shouldn't I have the final say? But then now I'm on the other side of it. And then you realize, oh, there's actually so many more considerations that go into just coming up with a design. Uh, and a lot of times it's not about having the most creative design or most awesome, innovative thing. Sometimes just you need to do something that people will buy and not everybody will buy that. So it's as simple as that. It comes down to business decision. And like you said, um, giving feedback to somebody else and have them take it, you know, take it to heart or understand where you're coming from and actually take action on it is so rare actually in real life most people will do what you say because that's their job and they will just grumble about it and you know to say something behind your back or not either way it doesn't really matter it doesn't really change the outcome i still need it to get done this way but i do notice that those people who are taking these feedback and actually take it to heart and learn from it become much better better designers in the long run because now you not only have your own point of view you are adding different people's point of view and different requirements to your design repertoire and that grows you that makes you see bigger picture makes you see more things than just what you like and what's in front of you so that's you know another advice i'll probably give to people critical feedback and be the ability to take critical feedback and turn it into action, turn it into something yours is such an important skill that will set you up for so many things to come in the, in the future. I 100% agree with you about that. 
it is very, very interesting to see what people are doing in business because even though your your focus is in a design world and over here and I may be over here in coaching and other business, the same principles still apply about how to be successful in business, how to successfully lead yourself and other people, yeah. and how to how to help them win and achieve more. So what is one failure that you went through and what did you learn from it? So I had to think about this one, but I think, you know, this goes back to when I was younger and I thought I'm going to be in the creative field. I'm going to be an artist. So certain things is probably not important, like keeping in touch with people who are in a completely different industry, like in IT or computer science, things like that. I wish that I, I knew better when I was younger that I would, my biggest failure is part of keeping up with my network that I knew from I don't know, since high school up until now. And I know so some, some people that are, who are so good at it, they grow their network to, you know, thousands of people and they're all, all engaged audience, which is so rare. And I'm, you know, I wish that I knew that when I was younger, that I would probably spend more time on that and spend more effort to to cultivate that network because now you realize everything you do requires a network, an audience anything that you want to accomplish requires other people's collective contribution or collective agreement on if you're doing something good or bad. That's just, that's just the age we're living now, you know, like that it is what it is. And I, I wish I knew that better and earlier. Oh, that's very wise. Um, very discerning to, to share about that because the currency of business is relationship. And knowing that your network, in, in fact, it is your warm market. It's people that can help you connect with other people. It's people that actually may want what you have to, to yeah. offer. It's people that can open doors yeah. just because they have something that you're like, oh, you're the person I needed to talk to to get that other business over there or have this connection. Yeah. It's yeah. super interesting because this is a very global community. Uh, the way we're doing business today is global. So... COVID has actually changed a lot of how we go about business virtually. Yeah. If it wasn't for that and us on Zoom, we wouldn't be here having conversation. I know. For, for example, just like, you know, small example, about 100%. And there's always like people know people, like each person has their own network. So the more, you know, these modules you have, the more you can get your word out. So that's, if you want to accomplish anything, that, that's what you need. I agree. That's, that's, and that's also to be resourceful. Uh, speaking of resourceful, what is, who is someone in your life that had made a big impact in your life and why? Um, definitely. I have two male in my life that I can pinpoint to everything that I have accomplished so far. One is my husband, of course, he is the, <laughs> he is the, I want to say the, the reason the sound of reasoning and also at times harsh reality revealer of my life in life or in life. Yeah. Who tell me that, you know, I'm just being a brat. I'm getting upset about things that's inconsequential or I'm focusing on the wrong things. I need to do this instead. Um, after, you know, I can, I have to tell you before, before, when I hear these things, my automatic response will be like, no, I don't want to listen to you. But now I'm a little bit older and I know better. I know that from a different person's perspective, it's probably the truth. Because when we're, when we're in it with our emotions and preconceived notions all around us, it's hard to see what's the real objective. And have somebody who can tell you that in, you know, as plain, as honest it can be, it's very rare. And I'm glad that he it does gives me good does give me good advice because you know some people give you bad advice and if you're in it it's hard to differentiate what's the good advice and what's the bad advice so I'm I'm fortunate I have somebody I think was already always giving me good advice so that has helped me to achieve where I am the other person was somebody I met when I while I was working at Skechers he's no longer there but he is was a creative like was one of the creative directors and we got got to know each other really well and he was a person that like I'm, I see him as a mentor really like he 
kind of pushed me into picking up art again and pushed me into just getting yourself out there and and all always have a positive attitude. He said that how you feel, how you think will become the reality. And you know, I always tell him some and the biggest thing I took away from him was that among other things that, you know, we're still really good friends and I ask for advice all the time. But the biggest thing was be positive, be always positive, no matter how crappy a situation is. If you feel positive about it, you're going to will yourself to do something even better later. And that's something is hard to do, actually. But once you kind of do it once, you feel the energy comes from it and it's quite addicting. So every time, you know, I have a something bad happens. Like I, I post, I send a piece of art out. Nobody wants it. I start telling myself, your art is not good. It sucks. I guess why nobody's buying it. And then I switch to his way of thinking. It's like, you know what? It's fine. I'm going to do next one better. Somebody will buy a bed. It's fine. And I think that was so valuable. So these two men have made a huge difference in my life. And I, if I can tell anybody for an, another advice, would be find a mentor. Find a mentor who you admire, who is an expert in your industry, who will tell you the truth. <laughs> I love it because I agree with you about the mentor and about those men that have been very influential in your life. One of the things that you know about me is that positive attitude. That is something I get asked to share about a lot of times, but it's it's not just uh, a way of being, but it's, it's, it is a choice. And I realized that to, to enjoy the riches in life, I've learned three things at least. The sound mind, positive mental attitude, sound health, and harmonious relationships. Wealth is on that batter on the list, but when you have achieved a positive mental attitude, a sound health, and a harmonious relationship, all the other things will fall into place. A hundred percent. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the wealth because honestly, if everything, all these three things you said are there, you're happy. Money is just something that's so, it's nice to have. It's not necessary. That's why, like, if I have a wish, I would not ask for to win a lottery or, you know, to have more money because that's such a non-essential thing. And like you said, when you have all the things squared away, money comes naturally. And then you realize how little money you need to be happy. You know, there's a saying, it's like more money, more problem, right? And it's true. Like, when you start making more money, you might want nicer things. You want to buy a bigger house or a nicer car. But in the end, that those things will make you happy for two, two weeks, three months at the most. And then, then what? You know, so it's like once you have to... That I think for me, anyways, you have to a do what you love, and b constantly try to better yourself and learn because that the energy, the act of learning, makes you feel like you have a purpose. And all human beings, we all know, all we ask for in life is to have a purpose. You know, a purpose that you agree with, that you respect, that you will put, you will put everything behind it to achieve that purpose. And I think yeah. anybody who has that mentality, who has that, are happy. No matter no matter who you ask, when they have a purpose, they're happy. And that, that's what it takes. I love it. Yeah, I agree with you. We have, in life, we have many, many purposes. And it's so beautiful that you are fulfilling many of them now as a mother, as an artist, uh, where you work, as, as a wife. I mean, you play many, you have many roles, yet you there's a beautiful balance and that you get to experience it all. Mm -hmm. And you get to, and within that experience, you also get to sit back and say, you know what, this, I am getting to live the life that I want. I did, I did accept this. Yes. And that if you want to make it better, you can choose to make that better. Yes. Yes. And I can't even say like how to make it better at this point. Like, you know, you, I think one of the question was, oh, do you have any, um, I forgot it was, what would you, I forgot. Oh. oh, what is is it? What about your best advice, or is it if you had a superpower, which one? Um, I think it was a superpower. One. Okay, I'll I'll ask that one, and then <laughs> we're gonna do one final lesson. So, if you could have a super, because this will be all edited out. All right, Dan, you heard that. All right, if you could have a one superpower, what would it be? I think I would choose 
my superpower to be <clears throat> to have ability to self improve like an AI. <laughs> I if you know that want to be my superpower. I don't want to fly. I don't want to read people's minds. I don't want to see the future or go back to the past. And I know that I wish I can have an AI's ability to self improve. And I feel like that will just cut out. Maybe I don't know, but I feel like that will cut out a lot of the struggles I'm going through right now, trying to grow. If I can just know exactly how to do to grow, and I'll be able to reach my goals, and then get beyond it, and then discover things I haven't even thought of. All that I'm being slowed down because I'm only a human, and I have to learn and self-correct very slowly. <laughs> I, I uh, <laughs> that's a cool answer actually I embrace being human because we don't have to be perfect and that frees me right that frees us to when we make mistakes to be like you know what I'm going to come from a place of kindness I'm going to be compassionate I'm not going to beat myself up because I can tomorrow is a new day I can make the next moment or the next time I do this better yeah right sure. that that continues to free my mindset better. for sure I guess I'm just very impatient and I want <laughs> to do everything better, faster now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's so great to have you on. Last question. What is your very best advice for our audience about living your best life? Have a goal, obviously. That goal can change all the time, it's fine, but at least have some goal to work towards. And then the second thing will be, be realistic with your goals. You know, I know for myself, I come up with some crazy goals that I think I'll obtain and then I realized you know what I don't have time to for that and it's it's and then if I revise my goals to something lesser and I feel like a failure you know so don't be that have be realistic with your goals and be flexible and know that you can always change and improve so don't again don't be so rigid. Don't be, be flexible, you know, like things change and just go with the flow. And I think that will take a lot of heartaches out of life. Thank you so much Lisa, for your time. Loved having you on our podcast. So till next time. And also uh, let us know how we can get in touch with you. How can our audience get in touch with you? Well, thank you for having me on this. I hope I inspire somebody or my answer was good. Uh, to some questions and as far to reach me you can find me on instagram pinky hoot art um, or linkedin it's lisi wang great thank you all thank you lisi thank you bye